with a name like Ghost Bat. You would expect it to be, well, spooky. However, in today's video, I'm going to share with you a few fast facts that might change your mind to make you think a ghost bat is anything but spooky, or rather adorable. So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. Ghost bats can weigh up to 170 grams, with females often being smaller than males, and they have a wingspan of about 500 millimeters. The ghost bat is endemic to Northern Australia, and they were discovered by scientists in 1880. However, they've had a bit of a turbulent situation since then. They're classified now as vulnerable on the IUCN Red List, primarily due to habitat loss from mining. However, the team at Perth Zoo has had a colony of ghost bats since 1977, with the hopes of introducing some members of this colony to the wild in the future. However, in the meantime, they're making the most of having these ghost bats at the zoo. So when the time does come to release them, they'll have a better idea of, say, some of their habitat preferences. For example, they found that ghost bats have a preference for where they like to roost, and specifically what to roost on. Turns out they prefer, out of the options available, mock rock or wire substrates. This would then come in handy in the future when, hopefully, ghost bats would be released into the wild. They'd be able to at least have an idea of some of the prefer preferential <laughs> preferential areas to release them. Now, I may have fibbed in the beginning because there is one aspect of the ghost bat that is indeed a little spooky. They are the only carnivorous bat in Australia. Okay, so they're carnivores then. But what exactly do they eat? Scientists looked at dried food remains underneath the roost and then also took it the next step farther by doing DNA metabarcoding of fecal pellets that were also collected from roost sites to find out what exactly these ghost bats eat. From their findings, they found that the diet of ghost bats primarily consists of small mammals and bird species with a little sprinkle of reptiles and amphibians, just for good measure. Now you may have guessed by now, but their name comes from the predominant color of the ghost bats fur, which as you see, ranges in color from near white to pale gray. Makes me think of during Halloween when, you know, kids are out trick or treating and <laughs> You know, the really easy outfit of throwing a sheet over and cutting holes out in it. There are many different types of ghost colorations as well, from, you know, more yellowy, really old sheets <laughs> to the pure white sheets that someone had just picked up at the shop and then cut out. Oh. It is a really simple costume, actually. I don't know why more people do it. But anyways, back to ghost bats. Now, I'm not sure if ghosts of our world do this, but the ghost bats tend to stick together. At least the females do. They congregate in distinct maternal sites and stay there until the young are reared. One thing that sets ghost bats apart from say other bats or ghosts is well the conservation aspect. A population of goats, 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 goats. <laughs> a population, a population of ghosts I'll say it really slow so it doesn't sound like I'm saying goats. A population of ghost bats were the center of Australia's longest running conservation campaign. This was based at Mount Etna. To protect this colony of ghost bats, the Queensland government did something rather drastic. They removed recreational facilities and gated caves in the hopes that this would help the ghost bats population recover. Recently, scientists have looked in to see if this actually helped the ghost bats with their population numbers and also the genetic diversity of that population. They used three different techniques to evaluate this. First, they used cave searches, just going on in and looking for some ghost bats, as one does. The second method they used was directly capturing some of the ghost bats to then take samples, to then, in their third technique, use molecular analysis to determine the genetic variability of that individual and thus the population. 
But that wasn't all they did. Scientists took it one step further and used radio telemetry to look out for red foxes, which could be a potential threat to ghost bats. Unfortunately, this study found that the population has declined by over 79% since the late 1990s, and that the population is experiencing a genetic bottlenecking event. However, if we're gonna look on the bright side, at least the government stepped in when they did to try to help the ghost bats. And this study has paved the way for future studies to continue to look at and monitor this conservation project of the ghost bats in Queensland, especially since they found that some individuals were foraging up to almost 12 kilometers away from their roost. So while it's all good protecting where they roost, you also have to be mindful of the land surrounding them as well. And I guess the other good thing to come from this study is that they actually didn't find any ghost bats remains in the fox scat that they found after using radio telemetry to find the foxes. And I guess another spooky thing about ghost bats, and I know this video started out as me trying to <laughs> share why they're not terribly spooky, but I feel like we should say how ghost bats eat. Most of their prey are captured on the ground, which means the ghost bat has to swoop in quite literally and drop in on their prey and then killing their prey with biting them around their head and their neck. Ouch. And it seems that ghost bats aren't quite picky when it comes to eating, for they'll eat some of the more unappetizing things, at least to most of us, such as feathers, bones, teeth, and fur. And you may be thinking, ew, that sounds gross. And well, you're right, it kind of does. However, it is important for the bat because zookeepers have found if they are fed boneless meat in captivity, the ghost bats become evidently distressed and also have diarrhea. That doesn't sound fun at all. All things considered, ghost bats play a vital role in the ecosystems of Northern Australia as pest control, especially with the control of rodents. So what do you guys think? Is the ghost bat truly cool? Or was this entire time I was saying goat bat? <laughs> Certainly felt like I was. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, if you enjoyed this video and hearing me say goat bat many times, give this video a thumbs up. <laughs> nice spooky thumbs up at that. Oh, well, it turns out I'll see you guys in the next video, at least I hope I will, which is right here on what real animal is like Batman. And that was the one I did with my buddy Cole Shirk. So go on, click it. I'll see you over there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in that video.